All right, I want to show you a good variety of medicinal and edible plants you can find in your own backyard. Okay, and we're going to start with this purple one that you see all over here. So let's get in close and check it out. Okay, this is our first one we're going to look at. You're going to find it everywhere. It's in the mint family. It's known as purple dead nettle. Okay, notice the triangular shaped leaves. It has the little flowers coming out of it there. They're pink. Now, if you look close at the stem, let me find one here. The stem is square. Okay. All the mint families have square stems, so that's going to help you identify it. But the easiest thing to do is just look for the plant that's purple all over your yard. It's a dead giveaway. Okay, now purple dead nettle. The leaves, the stems, the flowers, it's all edible. It's high in iron and vitamins and fiber. Okay. <coughs> the seeds are said to be high in antioxidants. And if you dry this and make a tea, it'll promote perspiration, which is good if you need to sweat something out. If you have a cold or a flu, the best thing to do is sweat it out. Drink a lot of water and just sweat it out. And uh, they say the fresh plant tea is a good laxative and tonic. So that's uh, purple dead nettle. And uh, I'm sure you can find some if you're in Appalachia, anywhere in that area. It's quite common. It's a real pretty plant, but a lot of people want to remove it, so. Just go ahead and maybe use it as an edible or medicinal. Alright, the next one we're going to take a look at is this plant right here with all these seed pods on it. Okay. Get in close and you look at that. Let me get it like this. Okay, see them seed pods sticking off of it? It's got a little white flower coming in. This is the beginning of spring, by the way. I let my lawn grow out so uh, I could show you all these plants. Okay, if you look down here, this is bittercress. Okay, it'll grow these little leaf patterns like that out the center of them. There's there's many forms of bittercress. Um, I think there is another form in my yard actually. If I find it, I'll show you. But. Uh, this here, they are edible. The seed pods are edible. Um, young leaves, raw or cooked. If they use the old leaves, you gotta cook them. Um, the seed pods can be pickled. I'm not a big fan of pickling things, but you can pickle them. And they say the roots make a good horseradish sauce. I'm not a fan of that either, but it can be done. There's a lot of it here. And they say the young stems and flowers can be eaten as well. There's not a lot about bittercress medicinally. All I could really ever find was edible, just the same edible properties, the seed pods and the stems and the leaves and the flowers. But other than that, there really wasn't much else. So, with that said, we're going to move on to the next one. Okay, I did find some more cress here. Right here's different leaves. Here is the one form I showed you. See the difference in the leaves? These are a little bit different. Okay, there's a lot of forms. There's, I think there's 150 different species or something. But so far I've read that bittercress is bittercress. So keep an eye out for it. Okay, tucked up in back there, next to all the nettle here, is common chickweed okay there is a lot of chickweed here and it happens to be very nutritional okay all parts are edible raw or cooked okay so that takes care of that and I just want to show you a quick thing to help you identify it okay 
there is lookalikes, some lookalikes. But if you pull this apart, notice how. Let me try to get in on that. Okay, watch. I pulled that apart. That's it's hard to see. Right at that tip there. You see that little nub? That's actually an elastic band. Okay, you can pull this apart. Okay. Like that. Try to get in on that. Okay, see how that's coming apart like that? There's an elastic band on the inside. Also, I'm sure you noticed the little line of hair there. There will be only one line of hair on this. Okay, only one. There's a single line right there. You can kind of see it. There is not one on this side. Only on this side. Okay, so that's another key for identifying these okay now medicinally a tea can uh, cool you down or it can uh, help with coughs and externally they said they're good for a skin disease to um, help with like itching and anti-inflammatory um, issues and mouse, there is mouse-eared chickweed. I think I have some of that too. It's it's just hairy. It's just hairier. It looks similar, but the leaves and the stems are really hairy. But them have to be cooked. Okay, this can be eaten raw, but you have to cook mouse-eared chickweed. Okay, so if I see some of that, I'll get that. If I see that other um, form of bittercress, I'll show you that. Show you the difference in the leaves. Okay, so with that, we're going to move on to our next one. Okay, I wanted to add real quick on the chickweed. This flower looks like a five-petaled flower here, but it is not. It has actually got ten petals. Okay, that'll help you identify. It's a white flower. It'll have ten petals on it. I don't know if I can get in that far but they are separated, there we go. Those are all separated and there is 10 of them there. So that will help you as well to make sure you have chickweed. Okay, so now let's go on. Real quick, I'll show you. Here's our mouse-eared chickweed. Okay, it's quite hairy. We'll get tiny flowers. All right, these ones you have to cook. You look in there for our elastic band, and there it is. If I can move all the other plants out of the way, okay, see it right there? Pulling, it's stretching. And there it goes. Okay, that's mouse ear chickweed, real quick for you. Okay, next to all the dead nettle here is another family, or member of the mint family. Okay, now this is going to be key for you not to mistake the two because it's important to know which one's which, but uh, they are both edible nettle, and this is henbit, okay, remember henbit, okay, square stem, let me get on this, I'll show you what the square stem looks like, okay, notice how that's square, if you roll it in your fingers, you can easily tell that it's square, okay, see how that kind of clicks when I roll it? And that is the same as dead nettle, which is right here. Okay, square stem. Okay, now this one here, head bit. See how them leaves kind of come off the stem? Okay, that's going to help you identify this plant. It has little sections like that. And then the very top will be like this with tiny little purplish flowers. Okay, they're like a magenta color. Now these leaves here almost have like a heart shape to them. Okay, now henbit, the young leaves can be eaten raw or cooked. There's no poisonous lookalikes. Okay, it is quite abundant. The stems and flowers are also edible. And medicinally, it's said to be fever-reducing, 
um, a laxative, I believe, and it also induces sweating. So both those mints induce sweating, which is good for if you're sick, getting a flu, a cold, whatever. So be wary of that plants that induce sweating because that is going to help you eliminate taking a pill and you can use this to get rid of whatever it is that's in your body. Okay, so henbit, we've got dead nettle, chickweed, and we've got bittercress. Now let's move on to a few more. Okay, now Tennessee has a lot of flowers so it's good to to use all the key identification properties and this is one of the flowers you will find especially in your backyard probably this is known as a speedwell I believe it's corn speedwells okay now speedwells are not necessarily edible I have not read anywhere that they're edible and get a good look at that flower. It took me a good while to figure out what these were, but I did figure it out. They have a hairy stem. Okay. Do not confuse this with henbit or anything. They are there is big differences. If you look at these leaves, the leaves are different. The flowers are obviously different. Notice how they have them lines going through them. That's the big thing that set it off for me, looking through a bunch of my books. Okay, but I did read, just like the other ones, these are uh, induced sweating. And that's using a leaf or root tea. Okay. Now, the tea does, it's, it said it induces sweating, but it also helped with urination, helped promote urination and menstruation. Okay. So, so, and it's important, if, if you're doing a long-term survival situation, it's good to know different survival priorities like that medicinally because those are things that you take for granted that you're just given by your doctor all the time. So that's why I teach medicinals and edibles. Okay, but you need to do the research on your own and consult an expert on this and do it wisely, like test these things in minute amounts before you ever think about um, just going ahead and just using it. You want to test these before you get stuck in a survival situation because you don't want to have to um, use those and then make it even worse while you're out there. So learn these and test them slowly but surely after you know what you're doing. And uh, you'll find it very beneficial and you will learn that you don't fear as much when you go out because you know you know what to look for and where to look for it okay now these speed wells are also used as a blood purifier which is interesting because a lot of us get a lot of toxins today and the Indians were big on using blood purifiers they actually use like Alex Vomitoria which is the Yapon Holly to throw up and that's one of their methods of purifying I'm not big on that one, but this one seems all right, making a tea and sweating and purifying the blood. Um, it's also said to be good for skin and kidney ailments, coughs and lung diseases, so possibly used for that. I have not tried this at all. This is what I have read on speed wells, but there really wasn't much else on them. So mostly medicinal with the speed wells. But let's move on to the next one. Now if you were to let your yard grow out like I did for this video purpose, you'll notice you get these little patches of tall growing, funny looking, little grass looking things. Well, it's actually wild onion. You'll notice that the leaves are round. Okay, it's not like like grass where it's flat. See, you just come over here. It's, it's all over. It'll be everywhere. Okay, this is one of my favorite wild edibles because I like onions and I like to use them for flavoring because when I'm in the bush, I don't like to bring flavorings with me. I'll bring seasonings and stuff, but it's always good to have a natural flavoring right from, right from the outdoors. 
and this is a good one to know because it's abundant too now these are interesting because you can use a lot of it and it's I mean even these right here alone smell like onion and they are edible when uh, when they're tender and young and that's before the flower stalks appear so you can go ahead and eat these up before the flower stalks appear like right now no flower stalk so these are perfectly edible okay and they are tender they're not too stringy you just kinda wanna grab above you know the old growth so about there oh, I'm sorry let me get up in here so like right there that comes off quite easily it's not stringy it's tender now the bulbs are edible and I'm gonna go ahead and use this little one here and I'm just gonna dig her up and once I dig it up I'll show you what that bulb looks like okay you don't have to dig down too far if you just have a little like I carry a really small sometimes a plastic shovel sometimes a gardening knife is what it's called I carry them out with me and it would easily dig this up I'm just gonna dig this out with my hands real quick and then I'll show you what it looks like okay I took pretty much that whole chunk out now there's multiple bulbs in here okay so you gotta collect quite a few to get anywhere near the amount of a real onion but uh, they have quite a bit of flavor in them now these bulbs like I said you can eat them cook them up use them as flavoring throw them with some wild game you got which I love and the Cherokees which are native to Tennessee use these bulbs for cold and cough fevers the juice for kidney stones um, I think there was, they used the dose of horse mint, I believe, before they would do the uh, kidney stone treatment. But that's a good thing to know because if you have kidney stones out in the bush and you want to treat it, find one of these. Maybe you don't need horse mint. I just know I read that, that the Cherokees used horse mint, a dose of horse mint, and then they would use these for kidney stones. Just the juice. And then the poultice of the plant for respiratory issues applied to your chest, which which is another good thing to use because when you're around campfire smoke a lot, you can have a lot of breathing problems. And that's why I use uh, pine needle tea a lot because it helps with with that issue. But onions, they just have that potency to them to do that, and uh, you can make ointments and stuff with these you know you use like you, you get the essential oil same way I've made uh, the bug repellent you can use it by putting a convex lid in boiling water with these on the outside and then the lid in the center catching the drops of the essential oil you mix that with some olive oil and beeswax or some tallow oil whatever you can make yourself a little ointment this is good stuff right here but these uh, these are perfectly edible. You bust that open. You can see that onion right there. Okay, that's real juicy. These are real good. I've eaten plenty of them. But uh, just go collect a whole bunch of them. They're all over the place. There's probably eight bulbs in this dirt right here. I think there's actually more down in the ground here. I can kind of see a few. Yeah, there is. So, go ahead and get a bunch of them. See, there's a bunch more. So, that's wild onion. I didn't think I had any of this, but uh, that is oxalis right there. Oxalis, I know, is a good edible. I've eaten a lot of it. You're not supposed to eat a lot of it because it has oxalic acid, but so does chocolate. And I know a lot of us eat quite a bit of chocolate, but it does, most of it, it's also called wood sorrel. It'll get like a little yellow flower, some of it's different, some of it gets different um, flowers and different leaves, but this is just your regular oxalis, it'll get a um, little yellow flower, and notice the heart-shaped leaves, that's how you know it's not clover, but they're really tangy, the leaves are, and they're pretty good. I, I like them, some people don't like the taste. 
but oxalis is a it's just a little trail side nibble for me that's what I use it for but like I say don't eat too much but they don't say don't eat too much chocolate so I don't know where you draw the line there that's oxalis or wood sorrel now all throughout here is a whole bunch of clover clover is not your top choice for a uh, wild edible but you can use it as a salad or a cooked green flour tea it's rich in protein okay look at them the leaves are pretty distinct and this will be white clover okay there's red clover and there's there's a few different species of clover but white clover is your most common and I'm sure most of you have seen it but you can soak these leaves and flowers in salt water and then boil them for large consumption because you shouldn't eat too much of it raw because it's hard to digest so just remember that tip soaking the flowers and the leaves in water salt water and uh, then you can eat a whole bunch and I think I think the flowers taste pretty good um, but the dried flower heads make a healthy tea which there's quite a bit of talk about their medicinal properties even anti-cancer properties how much of that's true I don't know we don't really try enough of it to find out but uh, the flower heads and the seeds dried also make a flower and it's good to know different plants that make flowers because flowers is your most, most filling um, food source you can get and it's good to know how to make a bunch of it you know like out of acorns or different nuts or different plants a lot of things can make you flower and it's too early for the flowers to appear right now but like I said I'm sure most of you have seen white clover before yeah, there's plenty of it and all our other wild edibles floating around in here um, the Indians use the leaf tea for colds and coughs and fevers like our other medicinals here and then European folk medicine use the flower tea for rheumatism and gout but uh, they say it's cancer preventative like I said and an antioxidant which everyone likes antioxidants today but that's uh, that's clover a good little tidbit information about clover alright now hidden amongst all this dead nettle here this is one of my favorite wild edibles that I've ever came across much better than any cultivated strawberry hidden down here is wild strawberries or common strawberries or wood strawberries okay they are delicious much better than uh, any strawberry you'll buy at a store they're sweeter and they just taste good Okay. Now I know the story leaves of three let it be, but this is an exception, a major exception. Okay, it's pretty distinct. It's not a vine growing up a tree. It's got a hairy stem here. Okay. It's gonna get a little red berry, similar to a strawberry, but much smaller. Okay. Much, much smaller. But they are uh they are delicious. Now, these strawberries alone can be used as, you know, nourishment or for water or to cure scurvy, which, which is huge because a lot of people die of scurvy when there's a lot of vitamin C around them already. And uh, the berries can be cooked. You can use them for jam. Um, let's see, the leaves. These make a really pleasant tea if you dry them. Uh, sometimes with leaves it's best to dry them, sometimes it's best to use them fresh, but I've read so far that these leaves are better if you just use them dried for tea. So that's pretty much the edible properties of it, but believe it or not, these wild strawberries have quite a bit of medicinals, medicinal uses. The root tea can be used for stomach ailments and lung type ailments. Um, it's said to be a diuretic, and the root also can be used as a toothbrush. That's what the Indians used it for. 
there's a lot of it here too it's going everywhere and I'm excited for when these berries start popping in they're also I hear that I've heard the locals call them snake berries because the snakes eat them and they're on the ground uh, now fresh leaf tea is for sore throats they say remember how I said it's better if you use it for dry tea is like a, just a pleasant tea for health but the fresh leaf tea is said for sore throats or like an external wash and like a sunburn um, said to be a blood purifier berries can be calming which is good if you're you know say you got bit by something and you had a handful of these berries and you didn't and you know when you freak out your adrenaline goes and it pumps that poison through your blood even quicker so maybe eat a few of these and it'll calm me down I have not tested that theory but I have read that the berries are good for a hot stomach anything like that when you have you know that feeling you get when your stomach's just kinda hurting the berries will help calm that hot stomach down when it's uh... when you got that yucky feeling in your stomach and uh, you know like you're thirsty and your stomach's just got a lot of acid in it because they are hydrating but uh, they say also the stem can be used for wounds to remove bacteria and burns and scrapes and the leaves for burns and scrapes so this plant you know like I said that fresh leaf tea is good for sunburns it seems to have a lot of good properties for any type of scrape or burn so strawberries got a lot more uses than just uh, eating the berries but that is wild strawberries go pick some here's another favorite which is quite a useful plant dandelion a lot of people know that it is edible it's just starting to bloom out flowers which is the perfect time to pick some greens um, the best ones to use for salads are the ones just below the dirt Okay, just below the dirt down there are the best. Um, the uh, right there, there's a flower. Okay, see that coming in? When they're down there, when they're still on the rosette, those are the best flowers to eat when they come out. Those are the ones that you want to pick. All right. They, uh, you want to remove that little white latex underneath it too. If it has that white latex on it, just pick that right off and they're delicious fried or they're you can boil them a lot of people eat them raw but it's best if you fry them they're actually quite good um, served with like butter but the young leaves before flowers appear are the best and all the leaves are edible but it's best like I said just to grab the one below the soil those are the best ones to grab the roots down there underneath this plant are quite useful as well those can be used to replace your coffee okay what you would do is take the roots put them in a slow oven and roast them bake them until they become like a brownish color or brittle and then you just grind them up just like coffee and I want to show you the rosettes because sometimes people get confused with the leaves but dandelion leaves are pretty distinct okay you peel all these other there's so many plants here if you let your yard grow here it'll grow into a jungle quite quickly okay notice how that has all them little blades on it that's that's key for identifying uh, dandelion okay before the flower gets in it's hard there is a lot of rosettes all over the place and they're one of the harder things to identify so just remember this right here that shape has that spade at the top and then it has them little sections as it goes down okay and that way you know you got a dandelion there are some plants that are similar so you need to look at certain things to help you figure it out maybe look at a dandelion and the one that looks like it in the winter time and then in the summertime come and find out which one's growing dandelions and which one's not okay that's that's one way to help you or vice versa look at it in the summertime you can tell which one's a dandelion and which one's not 
So then in the winter time, you look at them and you say, oh, okay, that's the difference. But they are medicinal. Okay, here's another one here. The medicinal properties of the dandelion include all of them. The leaves have vitamin A and C in them, which is important. The dried root tea can be a laxative, which sometimes is important. And leaf tea, leaf tea for loss of appetite. Fresh root tea, not dried, fresh for like liver and gallbladder and kidney and other bladder ailments like, like vice versa or whatever can be used um, fresh root tea not dried remember fresh is for liver and gallbladder and kidney and other bladder type ailments which gets pretty in depth but it has been used for that and uh, also for constipation so it's a laxative so dandelion that flower, that weed that most people want to get rid of, like most of these weeds a lot of people want to get rid of, is uh, quite useful and edible. And there we have another wild onion growing. Okay, so we're going to go off to, I believe, our last one. And uh, let's go find one. Okay, this is going to be the last one we're going to look at. Now there are probably multiple other edibles and medicinals in this yard but these are the ones we're going to look at because it's it takes time to learn them all and it's important to just learn the basics first and these here are all I feel quite easily identified and quite useful and you don't need to learn everything it's good just to know a certain amount to help you with your certain needs now many of you might be saying oh I know what that is yeah it's plantain this is narrow leaf Okay, there's broadleaf plantain, there's rattlesnake plantain, but this is the one you're probably going to find in your yard. Okay, I will show you rattlesnake plantain. I have found some. It's quite rare, but I have found it. So keep watching and I'll show you some more cool plants. Um, now plantain is quite useful. I have used it medicinally because uh, I have cut myself many times and I know to grab this. It's got drawing properties to it. It helps stop the bleeding. Um, hemlock combined with this is great because hemlock will stop bleeding. But this is antibacterial. Um, the young leaves are the best because these, these leaves can get quite fibery. But you can actually use these old leaves. Okay, now you see down in there, you see how it's got them sections? That's all slices of fiber. You can remove that if you want to. If you're that hungry and it's winter time, because most of these plants I showed you are here in the winter as well. Almost all of them are. So, a lot of times it'll say, oh, only young ones, but you can usually use the old ones if you want to get through the fiber. These ones you can actually peel that fiber out and eat them. Now, the seeds, it does not have the, stem, the, the little stem that grows up the center of it. But those seeds that are going to come, it's going to have a stem that sticks straight up. And it's going to have little seeds on the end of it. And you can eat those. And they will help keep you regular. It's like taking psyllium husk, like a fiber. Um, the uh, Medicinally, other than what I told you for cuts and stuff, it is used as a leaf tea for coughs and diarrhea and dysentery and like bloody I think I read bloody urine it can be used for which is hey you never know what you're gonna run into um, it's also been said to help with bronchitis and the leaves can be applied as a poultice to blisters and sores and ulcers and swelling swelling too Okay, and that's what I did when I had my cut. I just kind of chewed it up and smushed it on that cut because I did. I cut myself with a saw cutting down bamboo, and uh, I just quick grabbed some of this and threw it on there, and it healed up pretty quick. Because that's another thing. It's also said to help heal quickly, and it has quite a bit of antibiotic properties for healing, which is why it heals pretty quick. And they say the seeds of these stems lower cholesterol. 
So, that's plantain. It's quite useful. You get to know them all. There's quite a few different plantains. Um, but this, like I said, this is the one you're going to find in your yard. You, you possibly could find broadleaf plantain. I don't have it in mine. This is actually the only plantain that's in my yard is right here. But it is everywhere else. So, go ahead and look for some of these wild edibles. Make sure you consult an expert. Study some of the ones that I just mentioned. Peterson has great books. Um, Green Dean at eattheweeds.com. He will take care of you. He's got more plants than you can imagine on there. And he covers a lot of them that are here and that are in Florida. And he also has a link that shows uh, local instructors in your area. Okay. He has classes in Florida he'll take. He's, he's a great guy to go to when it comes to questions about any plant. He'll show you plants that you thought were toxic that are actually edible. Okay, so study up and learn some of these in your own backyard. You'd be surprised. Okay, all right, have a good one now.